Welcome back everybody, thank you for watching another video. Today we're going to be checking out the differences between the Ruger Max 9 and the Taurus GX4. Now to start off with, both of these are going to be on the lower end of this price spectrum. You shouldn't pay much more than $400 for either of these. But the question is... Which one is going to be better for you? All right, let's have a look at the Ruger Max 9 sights. The first thing you're gonna notice is this rear sight is pretty tall and it's very easy for you to hook it onto your belt or your shoe or a ledge, whatever you need to, to rack that slide with one hand. It's also a little bit taller so you can co-witness with the front sight when you got the red dot on here. And yes, it is already milled out for red dot, so that's a big plus. On the front, we have a combination fiber optic rod here and in the front there is a tritium bead. That's there so in low light situations that tritium bead will glow. Supposedly the light will travel up that fiber optic rod and really make that dot glow. And I will say it does glow but not as bright as you think it would. On the rear we just have a very simple blacked out U-notch and again it's very usable to hook it onto ledges. Alright let's have a look at the GX4 sights. Uh, and as we can see plainly here, the Ruger has the more premium sights. This is a very basic setup. Just a blacked out serrated U-notch in the back and just a white dot here in the front. And as we can see here, no milling for a red dot. Now as undramatic as these sights are on the GX4, the good news is that they are Glock compatible. So if you wanted to replace these with any one of those Glock sights out there, if you have a favorite one, you can just punch these out, drift them over, and use your Glock sights with the Taurus GX4. Now if you didn't like the sights on the Ruger Max 9, great news. They are Smith & Wesson compatible. The front will match up with the Shield series and the rear will match up with the Smith & Wesson Core series. All right, let's get a view from the top end here. Bring it a little bit closer. You can see the Ruger has this nice geometric beveling up here in the front. Some people are going to say, ah, the angling is just too sharp. But I think it really gives a nice image, especially when it's rolling around in different light conditions. You can see how it's changing color there. Nice beveling in the front to provide any snagging when you're holstering. The Taurus is a little bit more rounded, not as dramatic. And since we're on the front end here, we can see that both of these have no accessory rail in the front. Now both the Ruger Max 9 and the Taurus GX4 have very good cocking serrations on the back and the front. Very deep, very easy to use. Very grippy. I would have to say though, well no, yeah they're about, about the same. Nice and deep. Another great thing I appreciate about both of these pistols is the oversized trigger guard. Sometimes companies forget that you might be wearing a glove when you're carrying these and you need a little bit more space up here to sneak your finger in. So nice elongated trigger guard. Same thing with the Taurus GX4. A lot of space up front so you can get your fingers in there if you're gloved. And both of these pistols have very stout robust trigger guards up front. Let me bring in the Max 9. This is the GX4 here. Check it out here. There we go. Now the Max 9 does have serrations on the front end of the trigger guard. So that's there in case you want to take your support hand, point your finger, and kind of wrap it around that way to get a little bit more support when you're shooting. The controls on the Ruger sit very close to the frame. Check that out. That's the slide catch right there. This is the safety here. Now the Pro version of the Max 9 doesn't have a safety. So if you don't want that, you got to kind of upgrade a little bit to that model. But it's very easy to use. But even as you can see here... Sets so very flush to the frame. Doesn't get in the way at all. And this is one thing I love about this GX4. It is so clean. All you got here is this slide catch, slide release. And look how flush that sits. And the serrations are very grippy. It's very easy to really push that down and get that slide to go home. Very clean look here. Let's have a look at these magazine release buttons here. So here's the Ruger Max 9. It doesn't stick out very far. It's a circle. And for my grip, very easy to do one-handed mag drops. And what most people forget, especially me when I go into a gun shop, I get so excited about checking out the trigger and checking out the sights, is when you push this button in, the release button, you got to make sure that when it pops out on this side that a finger isn't blocking it because that's going to prevent you from doing 
quick reloads because you won't be able to drop it with one hand without moving your hand around. And with the Ruger, very nice design. And the same thing goes for the GX4. Check out that magazine release button design. Again, when I grip onto it, any angle. And that thing just goes flying out of there. Again, here's a look at it on the other side. You can see there's enough space there so that when I push it, no problem. Well done, Taurus. All right, let's have a closer look at the grip on the Max 9. Pretty much not a big palm swell back here. This texture, though, is very comfortable. It by no means is super aggressive, but very comfortable in the hand. You can feel it there on the back strap, even on the front strap here. Nice cutout, nice undercut here on the trigger guard. And what that's going to let you do is have a little bit more space for your middle finger to slip right in there so you get more real estate on that grip. You can see how it curves right in here. I wish this went in a little bit deeper. I don't feel like it gets into the web of my hand enough to get maximum control. It's a very comfortable grip. It's a very thin grip. Very thin grip. Not a lot of palm swell action back here. So it, it almost feels like an incomplete grip. I want to get into it a little bit more. Have a look at the palm swell on the GX4. Now I'm going to bring in the Max 9 in a little bit so you can see the difference. But look at that beautiful palm swell. That really is going to fit your hand. Now if you wanted to change the back strap, it does come with one. You just punch out the pin here and replace it. But because it's palm swell, look how far it goes into the grip itself. Now you have a nice beaver tail to go into the web of your hand to help you really control that muzzle flip on a shorter pistol. Here's a closer look at the grip texturing, much like the Ruger Max 9, it's right in that Goldilocks zone where it's not too aggressive, but it's still aggressive enough to keep your hands from slipping off the gun when you're shooting. And of course, we have a decent size undercut here on the GX4. All right, let's get these back to back here. Remember, pay attention to this grip here on the Taurus as compared to the Ruger. You can see that the Taurus is really going to fill up your hand a lot better then the Ruger Max 9. Let's get these this way. You see that Taurus grip is a little bit fatter versus the Max 9. I wonder if lengthwise too here. Let me get these kind of right back to back there. Yeah, these are about the same length as well. Go sideways again so we can have a look at it that way again. Ooh. All right, let's compare the magazines that come with both of these guns. Here is the 10 plus one that comes out of the Ruger. Beautiful coating on these. There's also a pinky extension if you want to use it with the 10 plus one. Also in the box, you have an extension for a 10 round magazine. So it turns it into a 12 plus one. And if you're wondering what that looks like, there you go. A little bit more space for your pinky to rest on. All right, let's have a look at the magazines that come with the GX4. The first thing I want to point out is the base pad of the magazine and the bottom of the grip have cutouts in them. So just in case, for whatever reason, the magazine gets stuck, you have room to actually tug and pull them out like that. So here's a look at the bottom of the base plate and the bottom of the grip. You can see the cutout there. Now, there are two 11-round magazines that come in the box. These are both made by Metgar. Right, here you go, the 11-rounders. And in case you want to convert it, Taurus offers conversion kits to turn it into a 13 rounder. Or if you just want to purchase a 13 rounder, they're available as well. Here's what it looks like. Now, out of all of the companies that are making micro compact pistols right now, Taurus has the least expensive price magazines and they don't sacrifice anything for quality. Here's what it looks like with that 13 rounder. All right, let's compare the weights on both of these here. So that's the Ruger Max 9. Coming in at one pound, 2.6 ounces. This is both with their lowest capacity magazines. Ooh, that feels a little bit heavier. Taurus GX4, oh, just about the same. One pound, 2.7 ounces. Let's have a look at these triggers. All right, let's have a closer look at the triggers on both of these pistols. Now, the Ruger Max 9 is very thin trigger shoe face here. Very rounded. Of course, here is the trigger safety here. So you have a thumb safety here as well as the trigger safety here on the face of the trigger. And this is a very mushy trigger. So here's the take up. Okay, I'm going to pull on it just to show you how much creep is in it. Okay, that's the wall there. Here's the reset. Way out there. 
Okay, there's there's the wall again. All right. Do one more. Take up. Creep. One more reset. Okay. Back on it. A lot of creep in there. Let's check out the GX4. You guys are going to be amazed. All right, this trigger right here is probably one of the shortest take-ups, fastest resets I've seen on any pistol out there. And that for Taurus is a game changer. They've never had a trigger this good before, especially on their striker-fired pistols. You have a nice flat face trigger, which is very thick, so when you get the pad of your finger on there, it feels very good. And if you're wondering, nope, there's no malfunction. That is the take-up. It is literally right here. Like glass. Here's the reset. Okay, back on it. That is titanically insane. Here again. Take-up. So crisp. One more reset. And back on it. All right. Let's see how heavy these triggers are. Man, that's amazing. All right, we're going to do three each, starting off with the Ruger Max 9. I just have a feeling, just from playing around with these for a while, that the Ruger's going to have the lighter trigger pull, even though it's a little bit mushier. Okay, first pull, 5 pounds, 12.5 ounces. Rack them. Second pull, Ruger Max 9. Five pounds, 8.5 ounces. Okay, last pull. All right, here we go. Last pull. Five pounds, six ounces. All right. All right, first pull, Taurus GX4. Man, this is going to be challenging because it's such a... All right, first pull, Taurus GX4. This might be a little bit challenging because that is such a stubby trigger face. Let me see if I can get right on there. All right, first pull, six pounds, four ounces. I think it's going to be right around that six pound mark. I can just feel it. It's a little bit heavier. All right, second pull, six pounds, five ounces. Ooh, can I get just closer to six? Last pull for the Taurus GX4. All right. Oh, there we go. 5 pounds, 14.5 ounces. All right, final thoughts on the Ruger Max 9 versus the Taurus GX4. I'm going to tell you guys right now, the GX4 feels more comfortable in my hands. It's got the better trigger by far. However, for just a $50 difference, $350 for the Taurus GX4 and just about $400 for the Ruger Max 9, I'm going to take the Ruger Max 9, even though I don't really like the trigger, it doesn't feel that comfortable in my hand, I can overcome all of that. The reason I'm taking it is because there's that optics ready option on here. And if you guys haven't had a chance to shoot something with the red dot, it is a game changer. And for $50 more, I'm going to take the Ruger Max 9. Now, if the Taurus was milled, I'll go with the Taurus. Or if for whatever reason the Ruger Max 9 wasn't optics ready, and both of these were not optics ready, then I would go with the Taurus GX4. Now the question is though, there's only a $50 difference between these two. So what will I do when I compare the Sig P365XL versus the Taurus GX4? Tune in next time guys. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.